Hello everybody, thanks for joining us. Are you sick of paying these huge amounts for your SSL certificates? Uh, here we got GoDaddy ranging between 70 up to you know, over 100 and roughly $150. We got um, network solutions here anywhere from let's say $75 up to 300 plus. Um, and then even Digicert, which you probably don't even want to see here, but uh, let's say look at basic SSL here. Um, you gotta buy it, it's about $800, 750 So uh, the point here is that these certificates are expensive. They do offer some other benefits um, when you're looking for your exchange server, uh, like possibly uh, some form of monetary uh, payment to you if the certificate were to fail. But as you can see here, um, we're gonna be discussing Let's Encrypt and it is truly free. So you can set up your Exchange server or really any web server with a Let's Encrypt certificate. So the point of this is to understand that there are some values to the paid certs, but if you just need something up and running, let's say you have an Exchange server that's only being used maybe in a hybrid environment or even, I mean, if you have a small company, it's still possible that it does make sense to use Let's Encrypt. And it's gonna be, should be as secure as this user asks here on the um, discussion forums on Let's Encrypt, he asks if there's anything that they're going to be missing. And then this um, engineer replies and states that um, the security is the, is the same in every respect. And they're not more strongly encrypted when a paid certificate is used. So be aware of that. And then they do describe or explain the other positives here that the Let's Encrypt certificate does need to be re uh, renewed every 90 days, but in a way, um, the tool that we're going to show you how to use does it for you automatically. It's pretty excellent. So we'll go over that. And so obviously the product is Let's Encrypt. And if you see here on this page, you'll be able to find out if it'll be compatible with clients, pretty uh, compatible across the board. Um, there's some details here for fine-tuning um, some older versions or uh, I guess additions of OS's and systems and some incompatible devices here as well. So if any of you have a PS3 game console, we're going to have trouble with that uh, with the Let's Encrypt certificate. Uh, so when we create the certificate, which we're going to show you in this video, uh, you need to have uh, a challenge done and what the challenge means is that it's going to confirm that your system is actually uh, appropriately set up or configured to be the actual site for that certificate so the way that you can do it in the easiest way is uh, an HTTP challenge what it actually will do is on your server it'll actually place a special token in the path of your system and once it's there, it talks to its Let's Encrypt servers. Let's Encrypt servers then hit the actual uh, website and go to the challenge token. And if it's there, then you've proved that you actually own that domain and you're pointing that domain to your system or your server that you're using Let's Encrypt on. And the other method that you can go about, which we don't, discuss in this video is the DNS challenge. Literally, it just gives you instructions on how to create a text record. Uh, you'd go to your registrar uh, for your domain and then, uh, or your, uh, I should say the DNS hosting, which could be your registrar, and place a record um, of underscore acme dash challenge dot your domain dot com or dot whatever it is. And then once it sees that it's there, it'll issue the um, certificate for you. Um, there's actually another option or another two options in here too that get into a little bit more advanced topics and seem to only uh, work for other systems so be aware that technically these don't work with exchange at today or at least right now um, but for exchange we need to have port 80 open to make it easier like i said if you can't do that your firewall is locked down and you can't have 80 open then you can just go ahead and um, go the DNS route to create the text record. 
but this is going to be the fastest and easiest and it's going to be the easiest for auto renewing so that every 90 days it'll just check uh, that you are still appropriately set up for the domain and then it'll go ahead and issue a brand new uh, certificate for you and install it in IIS. Uh, so the first step to actually get this going is to go to win-acme.com and as you can see here it's the client for Windows that allows you to set up the certificate and the beautiful thing is that it has support for Exchange. So we're going to go ahead and download it now. Okay and then we're going to uh, go in here and we're going to uh, extract it but when we extract it we're going to place it into a special, we'll put it in a program files. So we'll go into C program files and we can just call it win dash. Uh, obviously you can name it also, um, let's encrypt, you know, whatever you'd like. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there and we're going to extract it. Now that that should be completed, um, we're going to go then into PowerShell. Um, so inside of here, uh, we're going to go and take a look at what we just did. So we'll go back to C, we'll go to C program files, and we will go to the actual Win Acme directory. And you'll see it already extracted. This is pretty much the uh, extent of installing it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, pretty nice. Um, just so you can see, the scripts directory um, has uh, an actual script here called import exchange and import exchange version two. So they're both in there, which is nice. Th those are going to be used um, indirectly uh, with the easy way. And I'm going to show you the easy way to do it. But technically right now in here, you can actually just run wacs.exe and it is a complete wizard. To run through the whole wizard and you'd be able to go ahead and create your certificate here. You pretty much pick the options and you are going to tell it the name of the certificate, you're going to say how you're going to do it, so on and so forth. But instead of us doing that, we're going to go ahead and do it the easier way. Uh, we're just going to use everything command line because we have this pretty standardized for any of our systems that we have to regularly do. So we are ready to go as far as uh, using a script to run this rather than having to actually um, go ahead and use that wizard. So we want to make it as easy as possible. So in here, uh, we're going to go in here and we're going to just type in the actual host name of the certificate. That's the most critical part. And that's pretty much it. So for this script, I'm going to place them inside of the uh, description of the video. That way you have it right away. And what it pretty much is going to do is going to run the program we just did, but give it all the answers immediately. It's going to use the import exchange script, which actually tells it that it, this is for an exchange server. Because like, like we said earlier, this could be used on any web server, not just, um, you know, exchange servers. And then we're going to apply it to the IIS, SMTP and IMAP services. And pretty much this is everything you need to get it done. Okay, now that we have this script ready to go, we're going to go ahead and copy it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run a command prompt with admin credentials and we are going to go back to this proper directory uh, i know earlier we were in the powershell more than likely um, it's going to be much easier for you just to run this in the command prompt and so we'll go here to the right directory okay and we're going to paste this script in and we're going to press enter it's asking us to enter an email address for notifications about problems and abuse. Um, we're going to go ahead and leave that go for now. Press enter just to have it. And it actually says that it's testing the HTTP validation and it sees that it is valid. So that's excellent. It's placing um, that token in the HTTP site and it's confirmed that it can actually do an NS lookup to check and see is the host name available. Then it's uh, sending a request to that host name 
and it's making sure that the token is available and sitting on this server. And it did that all in the background amazingly really quickly. And right now it's actually, I think it already um, right here, got the certificate, got its thumbprint, applied it to exchange, ran the command to apply it in exchange. And then it looks like it completed and the renewal is gonna happen, uh, like it says here, November 28th. 2022, um, which is about 90 days from today, and it says certificate is created. But what's going to happen? Are we going to, you know, get stuck in 90 days and the server is going to start uh, failing with the response? Well, we have test scheduler here. We're going to hope for the best to see what it did. I'm gonna hit refresh, and there it did. So it popped in a new um, scheduled task to run every day i believe it should run yep 9 a.m every day and what it's going to do then is it's going to actually um, run this command to renew the certificate um, that's ready on the system so as long as that port 80 is still open as long as it can check it it's just going to do it for us automatically which is spectacular and so um, by doing this we now have fixed the certificate issues in exchange and we don't have to pay for the certificate and um, we can go into here to exchange and hit refresh under certificates. And right in here, you'll notice we do have our certificate and it adds the words manual to it. And we can see it's in here. The issue is R3. Uh, we got a, the subject and the alternative name are listed with a thumbprint and it tells us which services are attached to it. Now, just be aware that if you have any old certificates in here, you actually need to go to them and hit delete. And if it lets you delete them, then you're, you're in good shape. And um, if not, it could possibly give you a command. Like if you have a hybrid setup, you, uh, we'll put it in the comments, uh, I'm sorry, in the description below to let you know if you have to kind of delete a certificate that's in here, but it's tied to, let's say, a sender receive connector. Uh, this server doesn't have that, but it is common to uh, have a send and receive connector from Office 365 if you're in a hybrid environment. Uh, but the idea is you literally have to make sure that all services are using that new certificate and you should be good to go and the auto renewals will be um, in good shape. Uh, please uh, like the video and subscribe and share this with any of your other colleagues. And we really appreciate uh, you guys showing your uh, appreciation for the videos and we'll make sure to keep uh, creating new content like this all the time and uh, click the notification bell so that you can be the first to uh, watch the new content. Thanks and we'll talk to you soon.